Dear friends, this is Dr. Suresh Chhatrisha from Motiwala Homeopathic Medical College. I am guest professor in anatomy department of Motiwala Homeopathic Medical College. I have been teaching since last 30 years and today we are going to study ear in that we have already studied external ear that you can refer my another video. This time we are going to study external acoustic meatus. What is external acoustic meatus? External acoustic meatus is a canal that leads from concha of the pina. This is pina and this is the concha, the floor of the concha. This canal leads from the floor of the concha till the tympanic membrane. This whole length of the canal is known as external acoustic meatus. The total length of external acoustic meatus is 24 millimeter or 2.4 centimeter. We would stick to the 24 millimeter because it will be very easy for us to divide this whole external acoustic meatus into two parts. It is having external two third, one third as osseous part, uh, cartilaginous part, whereas medial two third is osseous part. Now, this cartilage of the ear is continuous in the canal and forms a cartilaginous part. This is only one third, that is lateral 8 millimeter of the canal is formed by the cartilage. Is formed by the cartilage. This is different, that is lateral two third is cartilaginous part and the medial two third which is osseous part that is 16 millimeters. So these two are different part, cartilaginous part and osseous part. These two parts are connected to each other by some fibrous structure at the periphery of the osseous part. This cartilaginous part is attached to the osseous part on the periphery by fibrous bands. This whole canal is not a straight canal, it is S-shaped canal, sinusoid canal and this is how it is described, I have made it very easy for people, for the students. Suppose I am making a story, you are meeting a girl and a boy is meeting to each other and they say Teri aakho se meri aakho me tere dil me utar gaya. These are three parts. Teri aakho, that is the first part which is directed forwards, medially and upwards. Meri aakho me, it is directed for backwards, medially and upwards. Dil me utar gaya, that is forwards, downwards and medially. So these are the three parts of the sinusoid curves of the external acoustic meatus. First part is forwards, upwards and medially. Second part is for backwards, medially and upwards. And third part is forwards, medially and downwards. So these are the three parts. This is how it is directed. Now, this external acoustic meatus is limited medially by tympanic membrane. Now this tympanic membrane is deciding the length of the roof, floor, anterior wall and the posterior wall of the external acoustic meatus. If you see this tympanic membrane, arrangement of the tympanic membrane, it is, the arrangement is like this, like this. This is right tympanic membrane, this is left tympanic membrane. So this tympanic membrane is directed forwards, laterally, 
and downwards. Now, because of this tympanic membrane, the canal over here, this is the roof, this is the posterior wall, this is the anterior wall, and this is the floor. So, from this you will see that the anterior wall is bigger than the posterior wall. Floor is bigger than the roof. So, here you will see that the floor and the anterior wall of the meatus is longer than its roof and the posterior wall. So this is you can remember like this. This is the tympanic membrane. This is tympanic membrane of right side. This is the tympanic membrane of left side. Cartilaginous part. First part is cartilaginous part. The lateral cartilaginous part is about 8 mm long. It is continuous with the auricular cart cartilage and attached to the fibro tissue to the circumference of the osseous part. This is what I told you in the beginning. Now in this lateral one third, whatever wax you get in your ear, but this is one third is the entry point. So we have to guard entry of anything whether it is mouth, whether it is nose, whatever it is, we, these are guarded by lymphoid tissues in our body. But here, these are guarded by some secretion which is little bit sticky and thick. So that anything is entering, it gets stuck over there. This is wax. We term it as wax. In anatomy, we term it as cerumen. It is termed as cerumen or wax and this is secreted by the gland and these glands are known as ceruminous gland. These are known as ceruminous glands and these are present in lateral one third. They are not present in medial two third. They are only present in lateral one third that is the cartilaginous part of the ear. Osseous part. This is the median two-third. This length of the teeth is 16 millimeters long. It is narrower than the cartilaginous part. As this external acoustic meatus goes medially, it becomes narrower and narrower. This is helping sound waves to get magnified. You will know that whenever water is flowing through a tube, you just press the mouth of the tube and the force of the water increases. Similarly, here also, when it goes narrowing, this sound wave becomes more magnified. It is directed anteromedially and slightly downwards with its slight convexity posterior superiorly. I told you, this is like this and like this. It is directed like this. So, its convexity is on the posterior superior part. Its convexity is in the posterior superior part. The anterior, inferior and most of the posterior part of the osseous part is formed by the tympanic element of the temporal bone. I have again and again told you that over here, just put your palm like this over here and this whole palm is representing tympanic bone. This tympanic bone is like this so it is formed this external acoustic matrix in the skull is formed anteriorly by this tympanic bone over here tympanic bone and over here tympanic bone that is posterior inferior part. Rest of the part is formed by the pet, uh, this squamous part of the temporal bone. So this most of the external acoustic meatus that is osseous part is formed by the tympanic plate of the temporal bone. It is formed by the tympanic plate of the temporal bone. The skin of the auricle continues with the external acoustic meatus and covers the tympanic membrane's external surface. Thus, this skin which is covering external ear, that is pinna, is continuous inside and it is covering whole of the canal. And not only that, this skin is gets reflected over the lateral surface of the 
tympanic membrane also. Relations. This external acoustic mantis is related anterior to the condylar process of the mandible. Posteriorly, it is related to the mastoid air cells and superiorly to the middle cranial fossa. Blood supply. Now, this blood supply and nerve supply is very, very interesting of the external acoustic meatus. The blood supply, it is supplied by the posterior auricular branch of the external carotid, the deep auricular branch of the maxillary and auricular branch of the superficial temporal. You will see these are nearly three branches of the external uh, carotid artery. Posterior auricular artery, superficial temporal artery and maxillary artery. These are the three terminal branches of the external carotid artery and these three are supplying external acoustic meatus. The vein they drain into the external jugular and maxillary vein and finally into the pterygoid plexus. There is a plexus along the posterior border of the pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone. This is draining blood into that. Lymphatic again it is upper deep cervical lymph nodes and the mastoid lymph nodes. Nerve supply. This nerve supply is very interesting in external acoustic meatus. These are derived from the auricular temporal. This one is the auricular temporal branch of the mandibular nerve which supplies the anterior and superior wall of the meatus. Anterior and superior wall of the meatus is supplied by the auricular temporal nerve and the auricular branch of the vagus nerve innervating the posterior and inferior wall. The posterior and inferior wall are supplied by the vagus nerve. So if with the help of earbud when you stimulate this posterior and inferior part of the external epistemiatus you are bound to get cuff reflex. If you want to know you just try it at home of course, with all precaution not to damage your tympanic membrane. So that's all. Now this is in external acoustic meatus. What was the idea behind learning this external acoustic meatus? Whenever you are learning this external acoustic meatus, you will come to know that the whole course of the external acoustic meatus is sinusoid shape. So you cannot see this tympanic membrane easily. For that, what you have to do? You have to lift up pinna upwards, backwards and laterally. This pull is going to make this sinusoid shape into nearly straight shape which will be directed forwards and downwards and medially. So that way you can visualize extend this tympanic play, uh, membrane. Thank you very much.